I am Mark O'Connell of the Wisconsin Counties Association. I'm Tommy Thompson, former governor of the state of Wisconsin and a proud resident of the great city of Elroy. And I'm Josh Shulman, Washington County Executive and good friend of these two guys. Uniquely Wisconsin is about the people behind the places. From the emotional to the heartwarming to the humorous and historic. We hope you like these stories because they are your stories, our Wisconsin. To watch extended cuts of these videos, visit Discover Wisconsin on YouTube or find us on our app. So I've been speed skating for 12 years, uh, maybe a little bit more since I started when I was five and I'm 18 now. I mean, I always had like the idea in my head to go far with it since I was like really young. But when I like actually realized it was probably like three years ago. We figured Jordan was probably gonna do it at 21. We never thought at 17 and breaking all these records that he's breaking, that kind of just blew over our head a little bit. We knew like two years ago the talent, you know, when you're starting to go to World Cups and, and Junior World Cups and you're doing pretty well and you just keep like climbing, you know, and getting faster and faster. But last year it kind of really jumped out because he ended up breaking the, you know, the world record, junior world record in the 500 meter and then in the 1000 meter. And then this year when the season started off, we ended up going to World Cup qualifiers and then he goes to Norway to a World Cup and wins two gold medals. My body was really prepared for it well, and it just, like, it was perfectly planned out for a good race. So definitely going that fast was totally unexpected, especially on that rink if the conditions weren't great either. I knew there was a chance, but I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't expect that much big of a lead. Through the opener, did the first lap, the second lap, I still felt strong and I just attacked it. And then it was, I knew right then it would be good. Your teachers become your greatest influence. And I wanted to be that mentor to up and coming young musicians, help them become musicians, but also help them become better human beings. Started out with trombone. I was not good at trombone, but that didn't stop him from caring and supporting me. His impact on the community is huge and has touched the lives of literally thousands of students and people in the community. He wasn't just a teacher, he pushed all of us and truly cared about every student, even if he weren't the best musician. Music binds us together. No matter what kind of group you have, whether it's the Dixon group or high school band or a rock band, it's a family. It's a great thing, it's a great outlet for me especially. I you know, do sit in my office all day, conference calls, and and get to kind of live out those childhood fantasies of standing on stage and playing my guitar. One of the greatest things that I can do is to find that 40 or 50 year old adult who put that saxophone in a closet, was gathering dust for 20, 30 years, and now they can get it out and find that magic, that sense of belonging, making music once again. The Human Services Department obviously told us about the foster closet and they said, you know, anything that you guys need, they'll find it for you, free of charge. And I just thought that was kind of like hard to receive. So for our first placement, we bought almost everything. They contacted me and said, like, no, this is what we do. All of the placements we've had have been emergency placements. It's, it's been every single time. I've relied on them fully for whatever we need. It's, it's been our lifeline. Our biggest focus as foster parents should be to be with those kids, emotionally, physically, um, and not be worrying about the stuff that we need. Um, so it can be very traumatic because kids are removed in the middle of the night, kids are removed after a traumatic incident. They're placed in a home that they don't know anybody. It's really where great foster parents come in to take these kids in and make them feel comfortable and make them feel safe and secure. 
We need people to care for other people. It's easy to turn away and say, this isn't my problem. We want to open your eyes and say, this is your problem. This is our problem. These are our kids. Every kid deserves a chance. And this is just a small stepping stone to get them there. I remember being five, six years old and having dance practice on a Sunday and my dad doing father-daughter dances with me and then we would have to go to the store and like mop the floors. You know, when he opened the business, it was a lot of, you know, dinners on the floor, um, you know, that we would come here so we could see him because he was here from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. But I loved those moments. It was great. I, we learned a lot of good values in life, a lot of good community service and supporting the people, just treating everyone with the most respect. We care about the county, we care about the people in the county, and we support everything. The Humane Society, Boys and Girls Club, Big Brothers, Big Sisters. I've been a Rotarian since 1998. Cancer Society, the MAC Fund, it, go, it goes on and on. Anybody that wants to do something in Washington County, we're more than willing to help them with it. He is just one of those people, the first time you meet him, you feel like you've known him forever. Jeff is a character, he's very passionate about his customers and he cares a lot about them and will go out of his way for him. Yeah, uh, Jeff's an icon here in West Bend and, and a great asset to Washington County. We're lucky to have him. He does so many things that people don't know about um, and that's the best thing about it. Like, if he, he doesn't do it to be known or seen, he does it to make a difference in the community and people's lives and it's really meaningful. You're really in it, and time sort of stops, and all of a sudden, the air feels kind of liquid, and you are in this liquid environment with other people, and that really is what drew me to it, is that feeling of, of stopping time for a minute, I guess. Lots of people who come to APT, this is the only theater they come to. They're not theater goers, a lot of them. They're APT goers, and this is their theater. This is the theater that they've built in, since 1980 and come back every year. Our, our patrons come, they'll often arrive two hours or more before the performance. Hello everyone, the performance will begin soon. There's just, it's breathtaking. There's nothing like it at the, um, to look up at the end of the night. And after you've heard a story and, and seen a story about universal truths and big ideas, and then to have the lights go down and see those stars, and you're in the middle of nature, and there's just something really synergistic and beautiful about that. Take it in, because there's nothing like environment, nature, with art. We serve probably about five to six hundred people on average per night. You know, there's a lot of good, hardworking people that put a lot of time and effort into all the prep work. You know, most people come in, they see the long lines, the long waits, the old fashions lined up, ready to go, but it takes hours. The chefs are here at seven in the morning cutting the steaks that you're eating at night. People are happy to be here, you know? We make good, you know, everyone makes good money being servers and, and running around, but we're busy, it's a fast paced, just go, go, go environment. And we have to be, you know, on point and we have to help each other out. We have to rely on other people to do a good job. Um, and that's what makes us work so well. We don't put up with, you know, anything less than the best. We, we have to be perfect in everything we do to be able to give that experience and that perfect service to all of our guests. It's not the number of people we serve, it's the number, it's of, number people of people we please. please. It's a great partnership, being able to work with my father, my biggest dream was to do that. So I have an article when I was eight years old that we did and we filled out of what we wanted to do when we grew up and mine was always to work alongside my father and 
because my sister had worked here as servers before and I worked with my father for so many years. There's a level of expectation that we have that you know, this is our name and our reputation behind that. Where I'm at right now is, is a great place for myself, my wife, uh, and our family. It's just, it's fantastic. I love Wisconsin. I feel at home. This is my happy place, and I'm happy all the time. But if I have a love, it's in that circus ring. And I broke my wife's horn. Don't tell her I broke the horn. It doesn't. <laughs> The circus life is not just work, it's basically a way of living. I'm a little sentimental. The daily camaraderie with circus people, they are a dynamic, energetic, fun-loving, but also very serious. Of course, it's, a, it's an emotional time. Yeah, in circus, you, you become family, you know, it's like a little town. The energy lift you get off of working with these people is probably something I'm gonna really miss. Really, I've thrown everything in that I had to throw into this career over the 33 years that I've been ringmaster. My legacy is just, I was very, very fortunate to be able to spend my life doing what I love. So you can't ask for more than that. The first time I got to see an orchestra live, I, I said to myself, I'll do anything it takes to be on that stage uh, at some point, because it, it, it's just, it's, it's, it's magic, it's real magic. In the final moment, there's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. Um, I hope it never gets old for me. It's a, there's a special spark at, at wowing the audience, which is probably why, out of all the things I play in, uh, the symphony is my favorite. I realize how special it is for a community this size to have a symphony orchestra of its own. This symphony orchestra has been in existence for over 100 years. In fact, this will be its 104th season, but it is still running, and that's kind of amazing for an orchestra this size. Well, the Sheboygan Symphony is the uh, longest continually operating symphony in the state of Wisconsin, so it has a national reputation. I'm originally from Paraguay, and I am delighted to be here in Wisconsin. Uh, this is a fabulous orchestra and a wonderful community. It's a very uh, close community of musicians. Uh, everybody wants to get better, everybody wants to work hard and to give the best version of themselves for the audience and for this wonderful community. Our tagline is that we have something for everyone and we really do. We have, you know, people as young as five, people as old as 95 that come sailing here. Um, we just say yes to sailing. If people want to go, we find a way to get them out there. Yeah, I love going here. I love, it just helps me relax and have fun. And also we get ice cream on Thursdays. These weeks have been like the best days of my life and really fun. And the first day I was like so scared, but like when I started fitting in, I realized this is mine. It sometimes can be overwhelming because you're in control of a boat and it's not something you're used to, especially at that age, you're not used to having such great control over everything. And it's a really freeing experience once you get used to it. It definitely like empowers kids to have some individual confidence and like believe in themselves. Earlier, we think than other sports, right? They have to go out there on their own and solve their own problems. Being 35 and finding something that makes you feel so alive and so incredible when you're out there, it's like 
I've lived in Sheboygan for six years. I'm at the lake every single day. I live two blocks from the water. Why did I wait to try this? Green Bicycle Company is all about how to live intentionally. Whether it's through the services that we provide to fellow businesses or community groups, the initiatives that we are working on with committees throughout the community, or the products that we sell, it's all about how people can live more locally and more intentionally and more thoughtfully. So in the consulting, we have organizations, clients who approach us with a problem, and then we create a plan that helps them reach a goal that will help address that problem. Green Bicycle Company fosters creativity and I think that our clients as well as our customers can feel that. I have to say that working on the Telling the Full History Fund with the Sheboygan County Historical Society Museum has been my favorite one so far. I've had the opportunity to interview 15 women in the area who have run for office or are political leaders to tell stories that often go unheard or untold. And so I've been able to interview people and get those audio recordings, create transcriptions out of them, and they will hopefully be added to a digital exhibit. So it's really about connecting the past with the present. You know, we're new, but I want us to have a reputation in the business and become people's go-to organization when they need that engagement, when they want that unique sense of community. All of our bread is made from like scratch and all of our baked goods are made with like our hands. Um, and all of the mixes are like divided with our hands and shaped with our hands and made with like so much love. The amount of energy that we put into it and like the fact that we can get like a staff of 22 to like show up every day, every morning um, and turn these lights on is, is amazing. Your first day open, what was that like? Like, like 12 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, I remember the week before, Michael's like, what are you making? And I was like, I don't know, I'll figure it out. And I was like, two in the morning, like just putting together some scones and we just didn't expect anybody to really show up, maybe like our friends and family. But we were sold out in like an hour and there was a line out the door. So it was just more comical than anything. And so being a 20 year old trying to run a business was me being a 20 year old trying to run a business. <laughs> I mean, people have been with us since day one, and we're so grateful. Starting a business in Stevens Point, it's obviously a smaller community, but it's a very interesting community. I think there's a lot of people trying to do cool things here. There's a great energy. And working with Sarah Jo is uh, always, it's, it's always interesting, for sure. Farming is one of those things where it's in, especially Wisconsin's history and it's in Wisconsin's blood to see cows and farms. We're part of this great state, this community, and uh, I'm really proud to be um, you know, a Wisconsin dairy farmer. I knew that when I went off to school, it didn't take very long to know that this is what I wanted to do and come back to do. It's not a job for us, it's a lifestyle, um, and we try to do the best job we can. People have just really supported us through it all, and uh, I don't think we could be more grateful for where we live. We all need each other in the community, and uh, and agriculture is all intertwined. So yeah, I, I appreciate living in a smaller town very much. Very rewarding, uh, especially when, when things are going well and you succeed, how uh, to get to do that with your family. For me, a, a lot of us were kind of introverts, so it's, you never really have have time away from each other, you're always together. I mean, it's cliche to say, oh, working with family, you know, it, it's great, you know, with a wink. I like working with my kids and with my family. Everyone's got the same goals. We're all focused on the same thing. I think it's a really personal place, you know, you work directly with the people who are working for something that'll hopefully last to the to the future and the next generation. I think that's that's a really cool part of what we do.
I, uh, I started in uh, iron work watching my dad when I was a boy. So having a, you know, a grandfather that basically came, came to this country like so many Im immigrants and had to like struggle to find their way in life, it, um, I guess it really has affected our whole family. And um, you know, from a very young age, we were all taught, you know, like be more like your grandfather. And, mm -hmm. We gravitated to Portage County. I really uh, noticed the Polish heritage in Portage County, which it's uh, 50, 60 percent of the population of Portage County is of Polish descent. I think it's it's important to hang on to uh, good and noble uh, crafts and traditions. Blacksmithing is very central and important in, in history. It really gave us this America. People always ask, how does that get made like that? Because everybody knows steel is very stout and stubborn, which it is. So we have to tame it in the fire. It's a resolute friend, you know. It, it hits you back if you don't do it right. So when you win and, and you can get it to do this, you're elevating iron to its lofty position. that we have Discover Wisconsin, and then we have Uniquely Wisconsin. There's a difference, and Governor, you were there in the beginning when Discover Wisconsin was created, but Uniquely Wisconsin is, oh, it's a whole new adventure. How do you see them being different? Discover Wisconsin is talking about destinations. It's talking about the beauty that you find in a county or a community. Uniquely Wisconsin are the people behind it. That's Uniquely Wisconsin. These places aren't just dots on a map. They're people's homes. They're their stories, and those should be elevated. You know, we have this uh, saying across the country, I guess, uh, Midwest nice, but I think in Wisconsin, it's even more so the case. Everywhere you go in every corner of this state, you find people that are welcoming, that are friendly, that are helpful. There is no place like it. For more stories like these, tune in next week for Uniquely Wisconsin. Visit discoverwisconsin.com or check us out on YouTube or the Discover Wisconsin app. Thank you for watching Uniquely Wisconsin.